Survivor Series is coming up. And I thought about it like, you know what? What was my favorite Survivor Series team? So I don't have it figured out just yet. So I'm going to quickly throw to the worst person to throw it to first is Rhodesia. What's your favorite Survivor Series team? So I'm going to answer kind of a little bit against the rules. And this is what stands out in my memory the most. The debut of The Shield made kind of just bum rush Survivor Series. I think it was Cena and Ryback in the ring or something like that. And they came in and that was the first time we saw The Shield in WWE. They were technically a team and they were on Survivor Series. So Nan and the Boo Boo got an answer. <laughs> what about I guess you, man? that works. <laughs> you just sprung this on us and I was like, let's hit record. And he was like, hey, I got a question. Like, what was your favorite Survivor Series teams? We were going to start talking about Survivor Series this year. And then he gave us this great question. I had to pull up on Bleacher Report. The top 10, because like he literally threw this at us like 20 seconds before we hit record. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, do, think, baby. I don't think my favorite team is on here. It was the team that it was Hogan and Ultimate Warrior. And I'm only going based off of filling. Like when I remember that Hogan and Warrior was going to tag together because like that's what Survivor Series was we talked about it right before we got on here like yes now knowing what we know knowing that Survivor Series was literally a show put on by Vince just to counter act another promotion that was running roughshod on Thanksgiving Day and it was a throwaway show and so it was like hey we'll just put teams together and that's the show and then kind of we won't even worry about it after that but for us, like as kids, yes. to be able to see like all the bad guys team mm -hmm. together and all your favorite good guys team together, mm -hmm. it was like one of my favorite shows of the year. I love uh, and it. that's so that's the one that's kind of like sticking out to me is the one with Warrior and Hogan. The Mega Powers that didn't start out on a Survivor Series, did it? Macho and Hogan. Man, that's see, we're going way back into we were really really little kids, man. I have no idea. The setup for that. Like when nope, it started, it I just remember it. I just remember it. it. I don't remember what it happened. I kind of feel like back in the day, like a lot of those things happened on Saturday Saturday night uh main event. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that's superstars. It, yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel like that. But yeah, you hit the nail, Mac, and I thought about it, man, as a kid. That's okay, that's the only time you got to see those guys really interact. Right? Because yep. in a lot of times back in the day, they all would every it seemed like everyone was doing their own thing. Everyone had their own feud, they had their own matches. You never saw bad guys really come together. You never really saw good guys come together, but you saw it happen on Survivor Series, man. I thought it was phenomenal. So I was going through the list myself. I couldn't really think of what was my favorite. I just remember loving it as a kid. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do remember loving back in the day was it was Survivor Series. And I'm trying to look for the actual Survivor Series, what year it was. Maybe somebody knows. But it was the year that the Ultimate Warrior, the Royal Warriors, and Kevin, uh, not Kevin, Kerry Von Eric all teamed together. Yes, Texas Tornado. Yes, and he's Texas Tornado. Oh, yeah. Man, was that 90 or 91? Something like Actually, that. Actually, here, let, let's, let's do this live right here. Survivor Series. Because I remember being a big fan of all the guys, you know, prior to it, before them all joining up in WWF at the time. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I was a big Von Eric fan over in World Class. I love what they were doing. He looked great, right? Kerry looked like the He looked like the man. Ultimate Warrior, I mean, as a, if you were a kid and you let all the Ultimate Warriors, the face paint, the bright colors. And then the Road Warriors, man, they used to dominate NWA. So when they all came together, I thought that was just a sight to see. Hey, real quick, for the Mega Powers, I was just joking when I said it didn't start there. I was just making up something. But E, you were right. It looks like per Wikipedia, they started on Saturday night main event, um, October 3rd of 1987. Hey, look at your boy. Hey, memory. Awesome. Yeah. Memory ain't too bad. So, so 89 was Team Warrior, which was Warrior, the Rockers. Jim Neidhart and Andre. Oh, no. Andre Giant was a heel. Okay. So it was that. Then it was. What year was this? It was Legion of Doom. Warrior. Yeah. It looks like Kevin. Yeah. Kerry, yeah. Okay. So that was 90. That was 90. Okay. Yep. That was 90. And they went up against the perfect team. And I was a huge Mr. Perfect Mark back in the day. I loved that <laughs> yep. game, man. You know, we have, to do, we have to do a show on wrestlers. We feel like. As a fan, they didn't reach their full potential. And, you know, 
you know, and spoiler, Mr. Perfect will be one of my guys. But, you know, real quick, though, the reason why I threw the Rhodesia on first is because I feel like the Hey Dave Savari series was when we were kids, Matt. Like the first, like maybe five to six years of it to where it was like dream matches, right? To see these guys come together in team because you never really saw it back in the day, right? Yep. When Rhodesia started watching, I kind of feel like the magic kind of was lost a little bit. Like right in the late nineties, early two thousands. Well, yeah, because we got to see him now every week. Like Raw was like pay per views for us back in the day. We got to see him on monthly pay per view, so the nostalgia was gone when it comes to like tag teaming and seeing these these stars. Like back in the day, you only saw the stars either to your point on Saturday Night's main event. You saw them on in squash matches potentially on superstars or on pay per view. So just kind of see them all come together was really really cool. Uh, and we started talking about Survivor Series because we were going to lead with these. Man, WWE is so hot right now. So hot uh, right now. We know they had opened up more seats last Friday for Survivor Series here in Chicago at Allstate Arena. And they almost sold out immediately. And WWE, I think on Monday, said, what the hell? They've opened up every single section now. At Allstate Arena. They are looking at the official number is going to be if they sell out 16,860. Oh, oh, how much? 16,860. Hmm. We know how WWE gets down. They'll announce it at 22,000. Ain't that the truth? On the show. Of course. But it's the biggest crowd in Allstate Arena since WrestleMania 22. Hmm. That is massive. And I don't even, I didn't have like a topic for this particular part. I do want to bring up the Orton piece that was also kind of came out last week. But like, they are everywhere they're going, they're selling out. Every single show is most grossed ever, merchandise sales through the roof. But for them to be able to come to a market, yes, that is Chicago. So we know Chicago, New York, LA, those are your hot, hot markets. But for them to come somewhere like Chicago and open up, every single section of seating as somebody who's going live i hate it because i love big production uh but i know that the energy is going to be ridiculous it's going to come across fantastic on tv i'm going to assume it's going to be something similar to uh the backlash setup that they had out in puerto rico and it was one other show too this year but those were out the continental united states or the 50 states anyway so like just were you what's your guys thoughts on just like maybe just how hot wwe is right now Almost 17,000 seats for a show that no longer is what we said it used to be. It, it got pushed out of the top four, big four shows for Money in the Bank a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Feels like maybe it's starting to come back now with war games or whatever they decide to do. But what's your guys' just thoughts on just how hot they are right now? Last on Raw, we saw what? And I'm, I'm going to give it up on this episode. We saw like hot, attractive women there you go. that they aired on on the broadcast this is saying that um, on raw yeah so you look at it like this like they weren't showing this before and of course yes there have been beautiful women showing up at wwe events for years but now that they're start starting to show that it's intentional that they're showing that they're saying hey to you mm -hmm. young women who maybe don't care too much about pro wrestling you can actually come to this that's how you know wwe is hot again just that right there alone and selling out hey forget the stage and production i want to take your thunder but hey let's pack as many people as we can in here Let's get Logan Paul, your your viral people. Let's blend and, and blend to UFC. This is before before they had a deal. They're hot, super hot. And this is why when we talked about um, AEW last week, I said this is why AEW needs to not compete right now. They need to just do their own thing and build their show in their way because WWE has too much going on right now, man. You know, you got the TKO energy has to add to what they're doing. You got Triple H on creative, full blast. You know, everyone loves what he's doing. Um, you got these hot sellouts. You got, the, and they're selling out all over the world, right? It's like the energy is just there for this company right now. And this is a great time to be a wrestling fan. It's a great fan to be kind of a, a I think, a, a, a sideline fan, like guys who are kind of almost out, right? So now it's mm -hmm. time right, as a fan, right? If you're ever kind of like, you know, as Matt like to say, a jaded fan, this is a, a great time to come back now because there's so many things for you to 
to appreciate as a fan. There's something that you're going to find, right? If it's not WWE, maybe it's AEW, but WWE, man, they're killing it right now. They are, man. Like, it's it's unreal to, to see that. And then the news came out last week that, and I, I hope they announced this, spoiler alert, it's around Randy Orton. So if you don't want to hear potentially when he may be coming, fast forward maybe 60 seconds, 90 seconds. We'll get to the plug and actually start the show after this. But uh, word is, allegedly, he's coming back uh, right around Survivor Series time. And there's going to be a full campaign around it with merch, with video packages, et cetera, et cetera. I hope they announce it. I don't know about you guys, but I hope that it is known going into Survivor Series that he's going to be at Survivor Series. Just because now that the word is kind of leaked a little bit, I don't like it's not a surprise. We kind of have heard it already, and I'm sure word is going to get even more and more out there, you know, in the next few weeks. But that's one of those that announce it beforehand. He can still get that huge major pop at the show and then off and running, whatever the feud is going to be, which I'm still hoping. We get him and Cody that can take us through Royal Rumble. Uh, that that is ready made as much as anything in the world for a feud. But what's your guys' thoughts on now? It looks like Orton finally got cleared, and we're looking at getting them here in, in about a month at Survivor Series. I gotta tell you guys off the top, I like Randy Orton. I never loved Randy Orton though. I liked him. Uh, I'm not sure necessarily where it is, but I do acknowledge that he's always had one of the biggest pops in the building for WWE, everywhere he's gone. Mm -hmm. So I say that because I'm like, man, you know, we're going to get a, a big Randy Orton pop for a couple of months. And then to be honest with you, I thought he's going to be another guy. Like he always kind of ends up being, Ooh, you know, geez. Like I, I never thought I'm of Randy Orton as, as, a, as a game mm. changer, to be honest with you. But wow. we got a new creative team. Triple H is ahead, maybe. And I feel like Randy Orton is one of those guys that never realized his potential, maybe the potential I thought I saw. You know, maybe this would be the time that he takes that next step from being a great utility guy to being the guy. Do you not think he did live up to his potential, but he has been around for so long? He's been there, done everything for so long that, like, what more is it for him to do? He's done the championship reigns. He's done the big face run he's done the big hill run he's done the team run like he's done everything so what more if so then if you had the book and then i'll, I'll throw it to radisha because radisha also hates randy orton too uh if you had the book what oh, would you do time. with orton say say we got two years left with him. <laughs> what would you do with with orton so my thing is john cena and randy orton their career is kind of parallel ding 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 and John Cena has been around just as long as Orton. But John Cena has, I guess, been built as the man, right? Right now, he's going out on TV, and they're forcing everyone to call him the greatest of all time. Why not Orton? Orton has had just as many chances. And for some reason, and he's done, I think he's done well. So to me, I think Randy Orton is a better version of Triple H. Someone who's been getting a lot of opportunity. Right, somebody who looks the part, but for some reason, like for me, Triple H should never be in that conversation as one of the greatest of all time. I think Orton can get past Triple H, and I'm not sure what it takes. I'm not sure what the booking is going to be, but I think it might be in the presentation. If they go out there and they make us call Randy Orton the greatest of all time, I think for a new generation of fans, that, could, that, per that perception can, can become reality. I think H was hotter to me than than Orton. Don't know if that's because of my feelings toward Orton. But like you said, he, him and John Cena has always had his parallel career with each other. And John Cena just always had the edge. So I don't want to say he was in John Cena's shadows because that's completely disrespectful. But it was always either or, either John Cena or Randy Orton. And he's always kind of uh, like thrived in the, in the hillish role too. So for someone like me who followed and cheered for for the faces and booed the the heels i probably wasn't gonna care for orton as much um you asked a question about orton i think i'm torn on me knowing ahead of time or not knowing because there's times where i say i want more surprises i want to be surprised when returns happen keep it quiet i don't need to know it 
So I'm torn between that and also give this man his respect of his return because he was supposed to be back sooner then found out he had some back issues and now he can come back again. So I'm torn. I don't know how to answer that question. Well, typically I I would always be about the surprise, but we know now. Got it. We know, we know he's coming that weekend. So it's like, now that we know that, got it. Don't make it a surprise. Like just give, give it to us. But I didn't know that until I heard on the TMW pod. It's a slippery slope, man, with being close to <laughs> wrestling and trying to still like be a fan where you like are legit surprised about stuff on TV is damn near impossible. Like now Bleacher Report is on top of it. Like Matt comes mm-hmm. home from school and he's just like, hey, dad, did you hear that? And I was like, dude, like one, shouldn't you be doing schoolwork? But two, like, how do you know the attendance numbers and how like what are we talking about? It was on Bleacher Report and you go and it's like, damn, it was on Bleacher Report. So. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. Speaking of the TFW podcast, welcome. 16 minutes in to the show. You guys know three to hard way. Rhodesia's here. Ishan's here. I am here. I am Matt. This is episode 77 of the show. Uh, shout out to all of you guys, all of you supporters, listeners. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Double down on that for all the well wishes and happy birthdays that I got on Sunday. Thank you all. Love you guys for that. We had a, we had a good time at at impact. So they did the, um, like kind of like the night after mania show where they taped, I think they went all the way up to like Thanksgiving. So that's like a month. Um, another really fun night of wrestling Trinity and Sunny kiss, which we didn't bring up Sunny kiss making Mm -mm. their debut, uh, at bound for glory, but they had a match and rocked it. Mm -hmm. So more so than, like I said, it was just a bad day at the office for, uh, Mickey and Trinity and then Trinity bounced back. Mickey wasn't on the show at all. So who knows if she's gone, but it was a really good show. Really good show. They didn't announce a return date or anything to Chicago, but it was really fun. Osprey was there and him and Josh Alexander killed it. Rhodesia was not big on Josh Alexander night one. Rhodesia, how you, would you think about Josh Alexander now after seeing him wrestle Osprey? I was going to ask for a moment to talk about him. So I was mad that he was in the top 10, like number five, six or seven, something like that. He was before Kenny Omega. And I'm like, well, who, who is Josh Alexander? How is he in the top 10 of something? I don't even know who he is. Again, not saying that much about myself, but it's like, who is he? In the first night at Bound for Glory, I'm like, okay, I see his gimmick. I see his physique, um, his aura. He has aura. But again, for you to put him in a top 10. And he was like, just wait, just wait until when it came announced that he was going against Osprey. He's like, you'll be able to see him work better. And I'm not going to jump on his bad wagon now, but I see a lot in that guy. I see why people say that he's the man is kind of like Osprey working effortlessly. He, he gets it. And he's like, he's like a amateur wrestler. He's like a pro wrestler down to his gimmick. So I'm, I'm loving the Josh Alexander gimmick for sure. And him as a wrestler, I'm a fan. It was good stuff. Osprey cut a quick promo in the ring, just putting over TNA, saying that his first ever match he's ever saw wrestling was a TNA, a TNA match with, who did he say? He said it was AJ Styles, Christian, Samoa Christopher Joe, and I Daniels, think it was somebody else. Christopher Daniels. Yep. Oh, those are and, some uh, matches, man. Yep, and he's <laughs> like, he's like at, he said at that time, at that point, he knew he wanted to be a professional wrestler. Wow. So he's like, it's great that he was able to be there for Impact, but he's got to wrestle in a TNA match. So he oh. made sure to kind of put that out there. Josh Alexander was like, all right, we did it once. Let's do it again in January. Because, of course, we know his contract is up in February. So it looks like I don't know what show they're going to do it at. Probably the one in Vegas, which I think is like the first show of TNA, the rebrand. Looks like we're getting Josh Alexander and Osprey number two, which should be fantastic. One last thing on the two of them of how great they are as wrestlers. Osprey and Hill Alexander, too. But Osprey say this was the first time that they've wrestled each other. He rarely have even watched Alexander wrestle at all prior to maybe like the night before he said point is for them to put on that performance of a match and they've never, you know, touched gloves or whatever you want to call it, touch hands. Like that's impressive. And they didn't do like, uh, they didn't mail it in. They had a a well-fought match with some high spots. Um, So overall I was so impressed with them too. And we got his autograph. Yeah, we did. We, we got yeah, a... Uh, Josh they, Alexander's I guess, autograph. Yeah, I guess they cut up some of the ring apron from Bound for Glory and gave out um, autographs for people who had the season pass that went to all the shows this summer in Chicago, which was really cool for them to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are recording this, of course, after Monday Night Raw. I don't have much on Raw. I thought Raw was not the best show at all. 
I what? thought that I thought Sammy and Drew killed it. And I thought for the most part, everything else was kind of missable. This was the first week that some judgment day fatigue set in with me. Hmm. It was the first week. So she ain't going to run for you and you going to go for me to squash her and to squash me. Now let's <laughs> talk about it. Dude. We've heard some fantastic promos. Nia Jax <laughs> may be the gold promo after that promo segment on Monday night. Are you kidding me? Radija hit that again for anybody yeah. who wasn't paying attention. So what she, she said. First, she first started. It was like, so you want me to squash her for you. And then she go to Shayna. And so she wants to hurt you for her. She goes over to oh, dang it, Joe, um, Zoe. And you get it. Hey, you pretty smart too. So she want me to hurt you for her. And then la- lastly, we get to Raquel. And she's like, now Raquel, I know you're from Texas. Ooh, no. so, ooh. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it down for you. So she wants me to squash her for you. <laughs> I was like, first off, when she first started it, I'm like, this is some Scott Steiner math because I wasn't keeping up with what she was saying. Now, I did play it back and it made a little bit more sense. But man, promo of the year, Nia Jax. <laughs> Tell me you felt it, E. You was down on Nia. There's no way you still down on her after that promo. I fast forward through that. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. That was a that was fantastic. And the reason why I I loved it was because like we would never be talking about a Nia Jax promo. (laughs) It was great. It was great. But other than that, yeah, I'm 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 gonna take y'all word for it. You gotta go back back. and watch it. I'm not going back. Did you guys enjoy anything else off that show? Like, or you feel like I was kind of on an island? I just, I mean, as, as great as I thought all their shows have been, last night was, wasn't it for me. You know, I knew, uh, I, I knew that show. I didn't, I didn't think you liked that show. I'm like, oh, you know, Matt wouldn't like the type of show. Because this is, it, it was a, it was a show. It was a show, they progressed some things, but in a very slow manner. It wasn't, it was a show where, when you say missable, I think if you watch a lot of like I, I was a big CW guy, like the the DC universe. Like mm-hmm. sometimes they had like just some filler episodes. So if you're a fan of the Flash, for instance, nothing really happens in it, right? But you just get some some great character moments. You know, you might get a couple of jokes that you laugh. But for the most part, out of like let's say if there's 20 episodes, that might have been on the lower tier. But it's still, if you're a fan of the show. It's your like, right? It just wasn't a lot happening on the show. And we're living in the world of, of wrestling to where we're used to a lot happening on the show. Right? It's a three hour show. I don't think it it wasn't like Raw was like, you know, and Vince's watch back in the day, where this was unwatchable. If you like wrestling, oh, God, no. they had yeah, absolutely they had a lot of good matches, the tag team match, which I thought was kind of weird. Triple H is booking a lot of these, you know, heel versus heel matches or face versus face matches where they have the uh, Alpha Academy versus uh, New Day. I'm like, man, is one of these guys mm-hmm. turning or something like that? But that was mm-hmm. a nice match. Mm-hmm. They had a lot of nice matches and a lot of nice moments. You know, Zia Lee is popping up. You know, uh, <laughs> she was doing an interview with who was, uh, I think Becky was doing an interview, right? And then, like, in a far back, you see somebody like walking by and they stop and start listening to it, right? And I'm like, I was looking like, is that Zaya? And then later on, she attacked somebody and ended up being her, right? So this stuff like that, if you watch the show, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, not much happened. There's two things I have from Raw. One I'm going to bring up kind of in our next segment, but just I thought it was cool to make up as a three-hour show, just that interaction with Logan and Ricochet. And Ricochet coming in and spearing or goring him. What's the proper term when it's not somebody's actual move of spear? Either one. Either one. Okay. So Gore! Gore! Spirit, Gore! Logan. I thought that was that was cool. Uh, may, it took up what maybe seven, eight minutes or something like that. But I thought that was cool. It, it put a little bit of respect back on Ricochet's name because we were like, dang, he he's losing a lot. Yeah, no, it did. It did. And hey, then we also had Super Cody too. Hey, we're real yeah, quick. I don't though. hear I don't hear nothing about y'all who had issues with Super Cena. I don't hear none of that. His My ankle man had was his broken. Ankle broke in segment one. <laughs> yes. By the last segment, he's destroying the. T- it is the three hours day. later, I mean, though. The judgment day. It is three hours later, though. <laughs> I don't have a it problem is- with it. Like it, it's fun, but I don't want to hear nobody say like that man is not like Superman right now. And no, 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 because no, see, Cody is married to Brandy, and Brandy's from Detroit, 
or mm-hmm. Easter, whatever. We it was mm-hmm. straight, and we built for a tough out here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course he can get he can limp through an ass whooping. Who can't? Like that's what we do out here. <laughs> that is true. But, yeah, we can limp through something like that. Hey, but hey, real quick though, like uh, I thought that was a nice segment as well with Logan Paul and Samantha mm-hmm. because I felt a little uncomfortable. You know, as a, as, Bef- a beforehand, you mean before before Logan caught her up to the ring? You mean or no? no after, I'm talking about when Logan yeah, when Logan started addressing Samantha, like like yep. I, and I that felt, was that was what you were supposed to feel. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's yep. how you're supposed to feel, right? And so when Ricochet came out to the save of the day, I thought that was a good moment. Like, mm-hmm. So they had like a little, a lot of little pieces like that, like you, you know, not nothing big, but you know, nice little story driven moments, subtle. Yeah. That moment, hopefully, that gets him back to where I thought he should have been after SummerSlam. Now Logan's back in the in the in the fold. Okay, let's get him a little bit more serious because that that was a great segment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so Radija, we talked on Sunday. We did our AEW Star Stop Continue. We said we were going to bring it up on this episode. I got mines, and this one was pretty <laughs> easy for me. Now, granted, I did it during Raw in the AEW one. I kind of did it. I wasn't watching AEW, so that one I had to kind of think through a little bit. I probably had mine done in like 22 seconds. It was real, real, real quick. So go ahead and, and, and lead the way on this one. I'm interested to see if any of ours are the same because we didn't have any of the same ones for the AEW, did we? That's what I was going to say. AEW, we were all over the place. I want to see if we align on anything here on WWE. Um, So I'm going to just go one by one, category by category. I can start it if you like, since I'm going to start with the start. Um, So we're going to do first start, everybody. I'll go next, then Matt follow, stop, and then continue. So for a start, I think what WWE needs to do, and just just bear with me as I finish all of this um, here, what I have to get out. I want them to have, kind of, I want them to have Wake me like, up when you we'll do, um, I'll do an air horn because I'm on the recorder side or like the hey. side, so I can air horn it. But I'll probably end up you alive. Um, canceling you this whole, I don't know, I'll probably end up canceling this whole thing and then we have to start all over again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, stop. So look, so. um. I want them to have more meet and greets or like ringside seats more affordable for the average fan, even if it's like a lottery or something, not where I, you got to make money. This is a capitalistic world, but I've been blessed enough to, you know, be ringside to a lot of shows, um, to go to like the access shows, have meet and greets. And I would just love other people who maybe can't quite afford it can experience in that too. Yeah, they can get into the building and get $30 nosebleed seats, but I want them to be able to experience that from time to time. And again, it doesn't have to be a hundred seats or well, it's not that many ringside. Maybe it's just 10 seat lottery for certain shows. I just want to see something like that because it reminds me, it's starting to remind me now of like the NFL where they're outpricing the majority of the people. So I just want them to maybe start more of a kind of a, a customer experience that's not like platinum seats where you're paying a thousand dollars a person, but more like a hundred dollars a person and limit it. That's when I want them to start. Look at that. I love the the, the big heart on my sis over here. I don't. Yeah, I, I think that it. was a horrible no, answer. No, no, no. I no, love it's not. That I think tells, that's the truth. You know why? That because tells that tells me the truth. you think that tells me you think that WB is so perfect right now. You couldn't come up with any start for them to do on TV. You had to talk about taking mm, prices. No, take prices and drop it. I no, can tell no, you that for no, sure. No, that's what I, I was passionate you. about. That's what I was passionate about. This is my start, stop, continue. So what I'm passionate right, cool. about is to make it more as far as family friendly, customer friendly, pocketbook friendly. That's what I want to see from them because each WrestleMania, those platinum seats are costing more and more money where now I can't afford it. Like it's it's just not. I guess I'm not meant to be at these some of these shows, then, huh? Hey, and when they can't afford, it, you know, it cost you much because they afford every goddamn thing, man. They front row seats. Hey, they 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 were sitting. I'm seeing the pictures of them at these uh these impact tapings, and they got seats. They like an ass crack of Josh and Zander. They like they smell. <laughs> they smell the farts, man. They they like, they like they like right there, man. So that's saying something. But yeah, I love that. Like that just shows how how unselfish you are, Rhodesia, and I love that. But hey, all I know and all I know is you'll stop and continue, baby, off the charts. But I gotta tell you something though, Matt. 
that was me. Like, I love WWE so much right now. It's like me laying in the bed with a cigarette. And I don't smoke. Y'all know me. I don't smoke nothing. A Newport? I'm lo- with a Newport, man. I got the robe open, legs crossed on the bed, taking the smoke. Man, that's how I feel right now about WWE. But one thing I would like them to start, and I had to, I had to, I had to dig deep. I want them to enhance. I want them to start focusing on their tag team division again. Because they a couple years ago, even when Vince was there, Vince Mix managed it, but they had a great mm-hmm. ensemble of tag team wrestlers. Um, you know, Usos was there, FTR was there. Um, they had a, just a great cat. I would like them to focus because I think it'd be a great time for them. To, they have so much talent. They can put a couple of teams together and really focus in on some stories. And they can really have some great matches. Um, we have a couple of teams right now. We have, uh, of course, the Ch- Judgment Day. Right, but they they, they don't just like Finn and, and Damien, they don't feel like a team team to me. Right. Like, right. I always think of a team team. Somebody's been together for a little while. They dress similar. They got the a tag team finish. All that. Like, right. They don't have it. Um, but you do have Alpha Academy, but you know, Chad is kind of fringe single guy. You got New Day who's been around. You got the War Raiders. I had to in my mind get their name correct. That's no, it was Viking me. Raiders. Viking, Viking Raiders. Raiders. Okay, I, see, I, see I have a hard I mean, time. They, they went through like six of them. Viking experience. I, have a hard time I mean, them. like it was. But you know, I was thinking about tag teams, man. Because back in the day, man, I used to love the Strike Force, and we were talking about themes last week. That was a banger too. You don't know what it is, Rodisha, but it's like girls in cars, do 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 do, girls in cars. Really good theme song. So, as a tag team, guys, I like to focus on the tag team division. I was thinking of G.I. Joe when he said Strike Force. Is there a G.I. Joe Strike Force or something? G.I. Joe. Yeah. Then when you said Strike Force, I was thinking of G.I. Joe. And I was saying, yeah, pal, this is so. a wrestling podcast. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think she might be right, though. I think there might have been like a little toy line. I'll look it up. Okay. Uh, my start is uh to good. put more emphasis on the women's division. That 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 has been the one significant glaring miss from Triple H's tenure as head of creative is the women's division. So they got to figure that out there. I think they're trying to put some more stock behind it. I think on last Monday's raw, not this week's, they had like the most women they've had on any given show in a very long time. Well, they yeah, need to raw, continue to do that. They had a lot of women this last raw. Remember when yep, I told they got everybody yep. continue to load it up, continue to put the emphasis on it. Mm-hmm. They got too much talent there for us to be wondering what's going on with the women's division. So that's mine when it comes to start. Cool. So for stop, I'll, again, I'll start Ian and Matt. This is not anything new for me. Stop the piped in crowd noises. It's super bad on SmackDown. I hear it on NXT sometimes. And allegedly it was during the whole Dom and Logan segment on Raw too i hate it i hate it. i know it's part of a production they are a production they have to make sure what they have on tv is the way they want it to be shown and seen and and eaten and taken in but it's nasty to me because as a fan i want to watch these promos i want to see this stuff and have organic and authentic feelings about if i want to cheer this person or boo them you're constantly piping in this fake noise it hurts my soul and my energy stop the piping crowd noises you know i seriously do not mind the piped in mute sound <laughs> At all. Hate what? It. Don't mind it. Sounds like that. I don't mind it. It, don't sound like that. <laughs> it does sound like that. Sounds like that, man. I don't mind it. It at all. sounds like that. I like it because, like, when I I like the the ambiance that it gives me, like, when I'm watching. Oh my TV. god! I like Come it. It's on, chaos. Man. It's a constant state of vibrating chaos. Stop. Yeah, That's not how it's supposed well, to sound. Then, I, then I'll I'll just go now because actually what I wrote down was stop with the goddamn crowd noise. <laughs> mm. That was what I said. So give it to me. Yep. That's mine. So what you got, man? What's your stop? So I had to really think hard on, on all this stuff. Um, but I think we need to stop with... I don't forget. I, like, I, I'm so mad at him. I don't even know his name. The commentator on Raw. What's my man's name? Not, well, he's not, not Raw oh, anymore. About Wade, he, Wade he, Barrett? No, he's on SmackDown now. Wade Can't was on Raw last night, though. Yeah. Yep. Get, wait, oh, you, what's 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 dude on SmackDown? Oh. What's his name? Isn't it Kevin as well? Is J- Kevin Patrick? Yep. 
Kevin Patrick. Stop with the experiment. It ain't working. Move him. Move him to NXT. Y'all can't stand him. As the, as the fourth man. <laughs> the fourth and man? As the fourth Who's man. Who's the third? Me. I don't care. Whoever. Oh, uh, all I want... All Jesus. I want him to do is give me a plug for a live event. Mm-hmm. He That's shut it. up and we move mm-hmm. on. That's all I want. This this have him plug some stuff and then move on. That's all I need from him. Stop with that guy. I'm I, I don't even know his name. Sorry to Can't that imagine. man. Sorry to that man. Sorry to that man. <laughs> Let's stop. <laughs> so to, no Tony Schiavone on AEW and no Kevin Patrick. I guess I like Tony. I like to, Tony Schiavone. Not on Collision. I like Tony Schiavone. Matt, you already gave us yours, so it's the goddamn piped in music, right? Yeah, All noise, right. noise. They, they, they got to stop, man. Like that, it's it's not needed, and you can hear it. And it actually takes away from mm-hmm. the crowd. It takes away from the crowd when you do that. So I hate it. And last thing on that, it reminds me of like the back in the Vince days. Like I hear all this cheering when you're looking. I'm like you're insulting my intelligence. I'm looking at this TV. And I don't see one person hand clapping or cheer or mouth moving. They're sitting on their hands. Why am I hearing cheers? So to me, like that makes me feel like I'm stupid. No, I'm saying this is something like Vince would do. Is what I'm saying. It's something that Vince would do. He wasn't smart enough to add to Big Daddy's (laughs) ambiance. So now I'm going to sound like I'm talking kind of out of both sides of my neck. But remove that part there. My continue is to continue your top tier production. The pyro, the when people come, wrestlers come in on their entrance and they have like their 3D effects, um, that kind of stuff. I like, I love you show that you are the monster. You are the best at doing this. Continue doing that. Continue finding ways to be ahead of the game when it comes to that stuff. They Just are. With, piped in noise. They, they are with the piped in sound. No, yeah. no, no. It's no, all no part of it. Sound. It's all no. part of it. So WWE continue. To satisfy Big Daddy. Keep those cigarettes in my mouth. Keep the robe open. I am enjoying having my WWE back. I feel like a kid again. I haven't enjoyed WWE, WWF in 10 years. And I am so excited to have an awesome Raw, an awesome SmackDown. I love everything they're doing. How long have we been saying, hey, I want to see more Zia Lee on my TV? And all of a sudden, right, I see more Zion Lee. Long time, yeah, yep, right. Since she came up. Like there is when you watch Raw for years. We used to watch Raw, and when it seemed it was a three-hour show. We seen like it felt like we watched, we saw the same five people wrestle for three hours every week, right? In variations. Now they're putting people out there. We're seeing we're starting to see like some character development. Um, we starting to see like the Imperium guys, right? They're doing something with those guys. We got DIY. DIY. Mm-hmm. DIY. No. Whatever. No, do it yourself. Do so, it yourself. Wait. Yeah, DIY. DIY. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing them giving them a chance, right? We're seeing mm-hmm. Indy back on the show. We're seeing them give chances to guys on this show. Hey, look, here's the thing. I'm, I'm I got old. it. You know what? No, no, no. I'm, I'm I getting got old. You. Rhodesia took her sabbatical for like two episodes uh, last month. E, you missed like the night two of Mania. I'm going I'm to miss the show. I want to hear y'all do it. Yeah. Yeah. It would be the most entertaining show, I think. No, I, at that point, I may just quit. I may just quit the pod. I just look. No, I'll, it, I'll it, just it, handle, it. like, I think it would be incredible. Because you guys you guys are funny. You guys are hilarious together. Man, we wouldn't know anybody names. But that's okay. Because I'm getting right. old. I don't like, know people's names like, no what, more, what, man. What, what, Got to snap the finger, E. What's his name? Him. What's, what's, what's we call it? Him. <laughs> them. Her over there. <laughs> You know they oh they part God. of they're part of the rock family, you know. Uh my continue is to keep continue to keep Vince away from creative. <laughs> that fair enough. Seriously. Yep, that's, continue that's to keep huge. away from creative. That's huge, yep. huge, huge. Well, well down, pal. Mm-hmm. Hey man, if he needs to do anything else from a backseat or whatever. One question I did have for you guys, I might as well just ask now. It was, it's around Vince. Do you think we are done with the over the top characters in pro wrestling now that he's basically not in creative anymore. No, no, no. I don't think we're done with the over the top. No. I don't think that they're going to shove the over the top down our throats as much as they used to during Vince's time. But no, I think part of that is 
one like the kids people little kids like that like john you look at john cena he's the epitome of over the top <laughs> and kids love john cena so i think that there's going to be a place for that within wwe so i don't think it's gonna go away but Which i was, just but he, vince vince creation hmm? he was a vince creation no that's what i'm saying i mean i all i'm saying is that i think that they wouldn't be purposely not being over the top now if you're saying triple h can't create or book somebody like a john cena and blow somebody up that big that's a whole different question the that's way what I i'm asking it. are we done i'm just asking are we done with the over the top characters in pro wrestling outside of right now tony storm and AEW? do we have any major characters in wrestling that did Logan? not come from the that not come from the vince era he's not over the top I'm you talking Undertaker. The top. I'm talking Undertaker. I'm talking The Rock. I'm talking. I'm talking over the, the top characters. So you're People talking that, about that are that like cartoonish bigger than type WWE. characters, larger than life. Not even just bigger than WWE, but the the characters that you look and tell that oh, that's a pro wrestling character. He's not a person. He is a character. Well, rest in peace, Bray Wyatt. When he was down at NXT, that's what he he was under age creation. He wasn't a Vince creation. Vince so tried he's still to, doing well, the Vince time though. That's what I'm saying. Is, but so then you, so your answer is you, yes. My you answer, think is, that, that, my answer is that, is that they, we will still see some over the top characters. Okay. I think I see Even why you're asking that, um, Matt, is because I think there's very few people like Bray or the rest of in that mindset to where they're thinking over the top or like that. And say what you want about Vince. I think Vince's original mindset, mindset around wrestling was larger than life, right? And there was something to that because it, it, it got people to watch wrestling, right? And he was always thinking of something like, hey, I need to make this guy larger than life with a gimmick, whatever it is, right? He had to give everybody a tick, something they were known for. And I don't think there's a lot of promoters or people in creative that think that way anymore. I think there's more people who always want a more grounded in reality type of character. So unless there's somebody with a Bray Wyatt's mind or even a Tony Storm right now where creative, they're like, hey, they have these big ideas for a character. I don't think you're going to see them like Vince. I don't think there's, I think there's more people like, uh, I don't want to say Tony Khan, but I think there's people more in that mindset of how to, pr how to promote wrestlers than there mm -hmm. are Vince. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's another Vince out there that's going to think like, hey, I need to make these larger than life big characters anymore right and that's that's all i'm saying is there's no right or wrong answer but i think a lot of us got into wrestling through a over-the-top character albeit uh jerry the king lawler albeit undertaker kane Hulk hogan macho Hulk man randy hogan, savage Kurt, ultimate warrior yep. andre the giant like you have those and then you look at the wcw side you had sting you had Glacier. <laughs> Some people love Glacier. Um, but those are like you your over-the-top You had the ding-dongs. Yeah, and, and there's some <laughs> in NXT right now. But I just wonder, with Vince being gone and, and a lot of the characters that we do see, like you brought up Logan Paul, Radizia. Yeah, he's over-the-top. But you wouldn't say he's an over-the-top character. He is just like him turned up. I'm talking about the fictional person where they had to bring in graphic designers and figure out masks or makeup and just that kind of thing. You know, I think that it's one of those things to where what's old is new again. I think at some point you're going to start seeing guys trying to stand out like a Dan Housen. Like, right? He stands out Dan on Housen. that show. He's he's over top character. Right? Yep. Super. Like, I think you're going to start seeing guys look for ways to stand out from the crowd because you're going to have so many grounded, I had to say bland wrestlers, right? They're just wrestlers and they just have great, good matches. And then you're in a sea of great wrestling wrestlers. Like, what? How can I stand out? Like, right? So you're going to start seeing a Tony Storm create this outlandish character that everyone loves because on that show, you don't see those type of characters. So I think you're still, I think for the next maybe five to 10 years, I think, I think you might start seeing a few more people think that way. Like, hey, how can I stand out? Outside of that, you guys know sports time, I bet. Before today, I have missed my last nine NFL bets off of one leg. If you guys don't know what legs are, you take three or four bets into one bet, and they're called legs. I've missed nine straight mm -mm -mm. off of just one leg. Tonight, NBA starts. I'm like, you know what? Let's go. Anthony Davis, you've burned me 
hundreds of times last year. But I'm going to give you one more shot. I took Anthony Davis over 20 points. Game is over. Anthony Davis had 17 points going into halftime. You guessed it. Anthony Davis finished with 17 points. That is now number 10. Bets in a row that I've missed on only one leg. I don't want to jinx anything, but elephant in the room, since we're not watching, is he okay? Since oh, he's he... fine. He just sucks. That's you sure all. he's not hurt? I'm positive. Okay. Well, he, he, play, he played 34 minutes, but he shot oh, 6 for 17. That. Look at that. He shot how do you not 17? score a point in the second half? You know how you didn't score a point? Because Matt had you in a bet. That's yeah. why. <laughs> I maybe digress. You, maybe maybe you should stop betting for a while. Well, well you yeah, have because bets I, like me, well, if you have actually, bets like me, you'd be like you'd be real great. If you bet only a dollar, you won't feel that bad about anything. Well, it was much more than a dollar. Anyway, said, anywho, a dollar, you'd be fine. Uh, if we can't do the pod on Sunday because our lights got cut off, you know why? <laughs> I tried to try to I tried to make it all back this weekend. <laughs> I missed. It said, "Don't chase oh. the loss. Don't chase the loss." Actually, I might chase it with the ten o'clock game. All right, what's next? Oh, <laughs> um, we talked about Naya's goaded. Promo. We did our start, stop, continue. Oh, well, to do her. Listen, listener question. Shout out to our our guy Eternal on Twitter. He left actually a great question. I was like, we got to tackle this on on the podcast. Uh, he said, "Great podcast, guys. I have a question for you for the crew. Who's your early predictions to win the Royal Rumble? For him, we'll just do men's first because he did both men and women. He said top five, not in order." For him, he had Sami Zayn, Gunther, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes. Who do you guys have as your top? So I responded back to him, said, love the question. I said, and we'll even throw in one that we know has no shot of winning it, but it'd be great for like us for if, if, it, if it happened. Uh, who wants to go first on the men's side? Big Daddy go. Well, I'm 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 hosting the segment, so I don't want to go. But you can go e if you want to. You said who wants to go first, and then you oh gonna... lord, you got two two of them. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. You said you said Big Daddy, oh, and everybody man. know. Is... You know, what petite I'm mommy. How about that? <laughs> Some sometime a little bit more than petite, this but is... p- petite is mommy. <laughs> I am not going to tolerate gimmick infringement. Petite is mommy. Petite is mommy. But look, Who you got you got you got Cody, um, Cody, 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 Cody. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. You got damn Skippy. <laughs> I'm going. No. I'm going. Cody Rose comes in with my favorite number two. Not number one, but two. Because what he's going to do, he's going to earn a World Rumble win for the people who say he didn't earn it. Oh, here we go. The people you who say us, you, gave, you, you gave us Pastor E showed up back in March and it didn't work. <laughs> so we we don't need that whole thing. So you you got Cody. You got anybody else? For the else people who list? say he didn't earn it, he's going in number two. You understand? All the way to the win, and so we can complete the story for our daddies. Book it. I did like uh, Priest telling them on Raw, like, do. You, your story sucks. Right. He was like, what is, what is even your story? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You're right, Priest. I kind of don't know it either. <laughs> Which is, I'm, I'm a little, I was a little surprised that you said it was too much Judgment Day. I'm like, man, we getting some good Judgment Day on this one, man. Like, Damien was, it was nice. a lot, though. I know. Damien I mean, was it was nice. good. It was, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's all. I would say I didn't really watch the main event fully. And I think that's maybe because there was some fatigue. Because Priest, I think, was in the main event. Was it with Jay or Sammy? I, yep. I think it was with Jay. And I didn't watch that match. So that tells me that maybe I was fatigued, uh, you know, subconsciously about mm-hmm. Judgment Day. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's a lot. Who you got, Rhodesia? Um, So I really liked, I forgot who asked us a question a couple weeks ago. But I really like seeing either Drew winning it. Or Gunther winning it. And between the two, I haven't narrowed it down, but I want one of them to then go after Seth and to win it. What I do know is on the men's side, I believe they're going to go after 
the Raw Championship, which is called the Heavyweight Championship. So I'm still torn between Drew and Gunther. I think Drew can definitely and should probably get it because of him being the the pandemic champion and let him get his respect now and kudos. But then Gunther, damn, right? That's all I can say about him. So either one of them, hopefully that's not a cheat answer, but they'll go after Seth and win it. You have uh, somebody that you know has zero shot, but you would Cody. love for that person to win it. Oh, to win it? Damn, you said Cody. Yeah, zero <laughs> That's great. Shot. Damn. It's it's zero so shot. <laughs> nope. All right. I have, uh, I got Cody, of course, number one. And then in no other particular order, I have Gunther. I have LA Knight. Mm. I have CM Punk. And then my, I know it's not going to happen, but Dan, would it be incredible? Is MJF. That's what you let, were let getting it, Let at. MJF tell it. His contract is up in January. Like January 1st or something, right? That's what he says. Yeah. Yep, that's I, what he I says. I didn't think about so that. That is my five women. Eternal said he has Jade, Becky, Liv Morgan, and he only, he only put four. His uh, dark horse is Raquel for the women. I Who have a... for your women. You know what? I'm going to go. My number one would be Bianca Belair. Okay. So she can challenge Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. Yeah, I'm surprised Eternal didn't have Bianca on his. Uh, that was probably the one I was like, he missed that one, possibly. Because she's on mine, too. Radizia, who you got? Man, mine's so outside the box. Whoo. This is a huge dark horse. You got Nia Jax. Just so you can hear her cut that live Oh, promo man, afterwards. dog, I forgot and about she do, her. And she, and she does it 29 Cause, times because she threw what? 29 people out. Could you imagine that? I would be a fan for life. To me. Um, <laughs> I believe EO is going to hold the championship until Mania. So I actually want Bailey to win the Rumble. And I want Bailey and EO to finally go at it. And I, I don't really care who wins. But I also feel whoever wins the Women's Rumble will be going after the SmackDown championship so you got bailey and and uh, i and and uh, i i'm sad i'm saying bailey because usually your rumble your money in the banks are usually that next person up to get that rocket strap put on them Um, but i think there's a good story here between eo and bailey if they book it right so i don't know i think you i cut you off but i think bailey no you should win i mean that's another good one too i mean that that story has been cooking for a long time and they kind of take it off the stove, they put it back on. They take it off the stove, mm-hmm. they put it back on. You got anybody else besides nope. Bailey? Mm-mm. So I have Jade, Becky, Bianca, Charlotte. And I picked those four just to get to some of these major matches we need to get to. We need to get to a Bianca Charlotte. We need to get to Becky Rhea. So that's kind of just using some of that for those four. And then my absolute dark horse is Tiffany Stratton. Mm. You want to talk about putting a rocket strap on somebody. She'll be made if you do that. So I like them. good question. Good, good, good question. Eternal. Appreciate that. As always, guys, if you guys got something for us, hit me up and hit us up on the socials. We're on X at that's FNW. Leave us a, a comment with the question you want us to hit or even your answer to this. And we will talk about it on our next shows. Sure. Uh, e, did you want to bring up the Will Ospreay? Uh, he came out, of course, and said that his contract is up in February. We touched on it a tiny bit last time. I know we talked about it maybe a couple months ago. I think some things maybe have changed since then in just the world of, of wrestling. Do you want to talk about where you would want Ospreay at or any other questions around him? Absolutely. You know, I'm also more interested in um, Rhodesia's comment about who's, he, who's loving on Will right now. It's going no. to get him into one of these companies. <laughs> So well, <laughs> that's not what I meant by that word. I meant like who's going with him in the ring, not who's actually doing. Well, I'm oh, sorry. I got things. I totally said freaking confused. like who's like who's who's fucking with him, like who's you know who's messing with him. Oh, okay. oh, you said that? I thought that came from E. Yes, but then when I re- when I responded, I said, yeah, we should do the will. Who's F- who's freaking with Will? And I think freak. <laughs> I think he took the I'm word freak into something gotta sexual. Lay out. I gotta maybe. <laughs> Maybe what I'll do on Sunday, I'll just like start the pod and I'll just mute up. 
Just make sure you you, um, you you do our pop our socials first. Every and freaking day and every freaking <laughs> night. I think that's what we're gonna do because you guys are, are unreal. But yeah, I know we talked about um, where we wanted to see Will and I think Jay White and a few others maybe a, a few shows ago. But I think it'd be cool to revisit our conversation and our thoughts on where do we want to see them now because a lot of things have changed um, in the world of wrestling. It has. Um, a lot of things have changed. And just for me, and I'm going to let you guys go and say quickly, I would like to see him go to WWE. I know right now I'm a WWE homer, um, but I just want to see him go to a different environment. Because if him going to AEW, I think we'll get more of what we're getting, right? Which is him and the Don Callis family. Um, you know, maybe mm. he gets a couple of shots at the TNT title. Maybe you see him go against Orange Cassidy. I would love to see him take a new challenge. I would like to see him take a new challenge in a different environment, get over in a different audience, right? Kind of step. I think that AEW will be like a comfort zone for him. He's already kind of doing it. He's used to that style. He's used to that environment. I think going to WWE will be a totally different experience for him. Let's see if he can truly get over on. It's still considered the biggest stage of them all. Right. Let's see if he yeah. can, will yeah. Ospreay can make himself a worldwide name. Right now, he may argue and say he's there now, but it's nothing like the WWE. There's nothing like the Disney of wrestling. Right. So I would love to see what he can do on that on that stage, and I think he'll excel. And I think Will Ospreay, the athleticism that he has, will be like another shot in the arm for that company. I think it'd be big. You hit the nail on the head as far as what I wanted to say say about Will Ospreay. When I first saw him in NJPW when he was about 30 pounds lighter in his green outfit, it reminded me a lot of Shrek because he had like those flags on his pants. I, I, I don't know what you would call it on his tights. And I'm, I was looking at that. And I'm like, production. Could I just even imagine seeing that in WWE? And you look at that character, he puts on the weights and he's able to still do almost all the moves that he was doing when he was 30 pounds lighter. I think, and I've said this for the longest too, that I want him in WWE. I know we talked about Jay White. I think Matt, you wanted him to go WWE and Will going to AEW. But no, yep. I want I want something like that commercial machine of WWE to get behind Will Ospreay because I want him to be a name, a worldwide name. He's going to go the farthest. He's going to make the most money if that's something he wants to be. But he will be the massive star that he deserves to be in WWE. They can give that to him. The other promotions just can't right now. Mm. It's a little bit of the uh, the J. Cody treatment. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, So yesterday on X, I had posted. We were talking about something about Osprey. And uh, it came out that Barry Bloom, who was like one of the bigger agents in wrestling, is taking care of his contract negotiations. Barry Bloom just took care of, I think he's also the agent for Omega and the Bucks. So when you hear Barry Bloom, you know it's, it's big money involved. Okay. He's going to get paid. That's, that is not a doubt. He's going to get paid wherever he goes. What I said yesterday was, for him, he needs to be structured on creative also. Because of what you guys just said. If he goes to AEW... It'd be great. I, I was the one to reduce point. I wanted him in, in AEW. I wanted Jay White in WWE. That's changed a little bit because we've seen a lot of Will in AEW the last few months. And everything he's done, he's nailed it. He's killed it. So there's no knock on AEW. But if he signs a long-term deal with AEW, the worry would be he's just now another guy. Will should never be just another guy anywhere he goes. He shouldn't. And I think uh, our girl Megan on Twitter, so... Kaz put up a, a tweet. He said we're posting for no particular reason. It's just like a minute video of Heyman putting over Osprey to his face and then giving him his business card. This is from a few years ago. I was going to ask that. Okay, and, uh, so years ago. Yeah. And Megan asked me, uh, do you think he makes the jump to WWE? And my response was, I think WWE will have to offer him something he can't get in AEW. We know AEW will let him work outside dates and companies and will match WWE for the money. What WWE can give him that AEW can't, though, is what I just said. It's that Jade and Cody treatment being a household name. It's going to come down to what he wants. Hey, do you still want to make a boatload of money and still go work in your homeland here or there and work 
some other indies one weekend, two weekends out of the month? Or do you want to be a household name, working WrestleManias, working WWE style and main events for the next four to five years? Of course, we can't answer that for him. Uh, I just hope he makes the right decision for him, wherever that is. Because at the end of the day, we know we're going to be able to see him on weekly TV in the United States. So really, we watch almost everything. That's a win. Weekly. It's a win for us. Mm -hmm. But I I want him just to do what's right for him. And if you just look at everything, this could be his time to go to WWE. Because, so we look at AEW. Jericho put him over. Clean. And that's the other thing, too. It's like, man, if you didn't know you were going to sign him, would you have put him over clean? Would Kenny have put him over when he put him over, even though Osprey had put Kenny over a multitude of times before mm-hmm. that? You just, once again, you kind of look and just say, all right, what else could he do if he signs right now? What's his fuse? Okay, you go MJF. Okay, we go Jay White. And yes, you can make people, but it's kind of like almost it for things you would say, what do I want to see from Will Osprey and AEW? You go WWE. Oh my God. Cody Rhodes. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. I mean, we can keep going. Gunther, we know the list laundry. Ricochet, hello. Can we get a rematch of him and Ricochet? <laughs> right? God, man. Man, that would like, be a great so match now, too, because you think both of those guys have learned psychology in addition to, like, they yes. still can do the stuff they were doing, like, 10 years ago? Wow. Yep. One last thing on Will, I'll say. The last time I felt this way about somebody, and I won't say over the top character the way you described it a little bit earlier ago, but it's like Bailey. The last time I had this feeling, I remember when Bailey came from NXT. I'm like, man, she's she's a super baby face. She is going to take main card or main roster by storm. That that's it. That she is the baby face. She's going to be the new face of WWE for the women. And I feel that way with Will. One, because he goes so effortlessly in the ring, it's almost like he's a superhuman, almost like a superhero. And we know WWE does it best when it comes to those type of characters. So I just wanted to say the last time I felt this way about a potential character doing really well at main um, main event or main card was Bailey. although I think Bailey's soccer mom time I didn't care for too much, but she got over on, on the hillside. But that was the last time I felt this way. And, they had a lot with Bailey, and I think they'll be able to have a lot and more with Will Ospreay. I do wonder, does he even want to go to WWE? I know before it wasn't a big thing. They want him. I think he's open to listen now, but I share the story when he talked about, you know, after the match with Alexander, his first entry into wrestling was watching TNA. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a WrestleMania. It wasn't a Monday Night Raw. It wasn't a Friday Night SmackDown. It was TNA. That may not even be a thing that he wants. He may not even care that, oh, I've never done a WrestleMania. And he just did all in, which was in his home country in front of 65,000 people. Right? So, like, we don't know kind of what he wants uh, from that. So, that could be interesting, too. Everybody just isn't growing up like we did. And, you know, WWE was the end-all, be-all for our, our TV. Uh, Granny E, I know you watch me, you know, NWA. We both watched WCW. But we knew WWE as, like, the top, even when they were getting beat by WCW, was still like, well, it's still WWF. It's, it's WWF. And maybe he doesn't feel that way. It, it'd be interesting to see. Sure. Yeah. All right. I am out. I'm fresh out. I'm fresh out of ideas, guys. I'm fresh out of ideas. I'm fresh out of bets. I'm fresh out of money. <laughs> fresh out of content. I'm just fresh out. Guess we uh, we hit the socials, right? Well, we're also on Instagram. We're on YouTube. Full videos. The search that's freaking wrestling. We're trying to get the TikTok thing taken care of. Radija, you got to figure this TikTok thing out. So petite mommy out. is also kind of almost middle aged mommy too. So it's just like, ooh, is that, is that gonna be our? Is that gonna be our yeah. TikTok thing? Wait, like, no. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Man, some of this stuff <laughs> is just like, going over my head. I I had responded to Matthew on a text message. Somehow I bubbled it add a two notification on top of it i don't even know how i did that so i think i'm a little bit scared actually where did facebook at i know how to operate facebook right look you know how to operate facebook don't you oh my gosh you she got, said middle-aged got, mommy got i gotta i done heard it all said, no i said i said almost middle-aged mommy i said almost. petitish mommy almost middle-aged mommy <laughs> that is worse. funny we're out of here on that no we'll be back on sunday I don't even know what we're going to talk about, but there's a lot going on. Oh, there's one thing, and we can get out of here. Dynamite this week is in Philly. 
they have RVD and Hook teaming up. I love that. They're facing the Dark Order, I believe. I don't love that. Why not? You get a legend like RVD maximized. Wait, wait, is it is that. it is it Johnny Hungy? I'm, I think so. I'm sure it is. Let's go. Are they trying to push him? They're trying to push him. All right, look, if we got E to be happy about someone AW, we end the show right okay. there. Yes. Thank you guys for listening. We will talk to you on Sunday.